Surely many Game Boy owners like myself in the mid-90s had one of these unofficial multi-carts. They used to contain dozens of random Game Boy titles packed onto a single cartridge, unofficially introducing me to some of my favourite ever Game Boy titles. There were so many of these back then. I remember buying them off the counter whenever I visited the local market, they were pretty common. They definitely have an interesting place in gaming history, and there's even many unlicensed cartridges out there. Take A-Force, for example, from the Taiwanese developer Sachin. You can still find the modern day equivalent of a multi-cart, I still see them crop up on eBay or AliExpress. And while they are a fun novelty, I would just be a little wary of buying them. Every multi-cart I bought in my childhood never seemed to last very long. I can't even seem to get this one working anymore. Like, I tried every combination, and sadly I think it may have just given up. But the interesting thing about the multi-card experience was you'd never quite know what game you'd find. Something weird, something unusual... Something like Sonic the Hedgehog 6, or Sonic 6. Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Boy, imagine that! Of course, nowadays Sonic has frequently appeared on Nintendo hardware, but back then, seeing Sonic appear on his direct competitor's hardware in the late 90s, it just seemed almost unthinkable. Why can't it be more like that nice boy Mario? Oh, yeah. Little brat. This unusual little title was something I very fondly remember from my childhood. It's surprisingly okay. It even included a couple of those iconic loop-de-loops, which were strangely absent in even the original Game Gear Sonic. I have a lot of nostalgia for this weird little title. I think I was even playing it on my Game Boy Color alongside Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. Ah! I just got a kick out of watching Sonic crudely running through a giant loop-de-loop on a Game Boy. It looked a little better on the actual Game Boy screen than this. It hardly plays like a Sonic game, like Sonic is unable to curl into a ball. A single hit from an enemy or stage hazard will kill you. You don't collect rings, but these spinning cookies? Pizzas? Oh right, cheese. And Sonic himself is the only reoccurring character from his perspective franchise. Everything else is just some generic stock video game enemy. For years I naively thought Sonic 6 was just somebody's personal project, and I was completely mind blown when I discovered it was in actuality a mere sprite hack of an already existing game. The Sunsoft license based platformer Speedy Gonzales based on the old animated shorts by Warner Brothers. I mean it totally makes sense doesn't it, both characters run fast? Both games are near identical, though the worlds were swapped around in the Sonic hack. Playing the official product itself, you kind of realise the game is so utterly generic, you could probably swap in any lame old character and nobody would notice. Oh, this is absolutely my thing. I live for generic, unremarkable Game Boy platformers. Just give them all to me. So, yeah, it's nothing special, but I thought it might be fun just to show a little curiosity from my childhood and how it ties into the weird and wonderful world of pirate multicarts. If you do really want to play this game, I'd recommend sticking with the official product itself. But we're not quite done here yet. Sunsoft released quite a few license based platformers for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I remember really enjoying Batman actually, I don't quite know why they gave Batman a gun though, I, I thought he didn't kill. The Looney Tunes is also quite solid, really decent little platformer. And Sunsoft even released a follow-up to Speedy Gonzales, the Aztec Adventure, and it's a pretty big step up from the original. Fantastic looking graphics for a Game Boy Color title. Speedy is now able to defend himself through the use of different power-ups, and there is a fairly nice sensation of speed. It feels quite fun zipping through the bright vibrant streets of a Mexican city. Really detailed looking backgrounds, the bright blue skies gradually turn into dusk and then a starry night. Oh, and I do love Speedy Sprite, just look at that little face. It's such a nice looking game. There's even a fun few gimmicks thrown in, such as the speedboat section and a submarine. It's not bad. Pretty fun game in my childhood, but again, it's nothing amazing. The boss battles in particular are pretty bad. Some of these I swear I just beat through my own dumb luck. And it always feels as though the game can be very stingy with its health power-ups. And a timer that almost always seems to run out. The difficulty does get pretty annoying, and you really have to learn the level design. Fortunately, Speedy is able to take three hits this time, and just like the first game, you do at least have passwords and infinite continues. It's generic Game Boy platforming fun. Wouldn't it be funny if somebody hacked Sonic into this one, or maybe they already have already? 
Sonic has had quite a storied career in unofficial hacks. I used to have a cartridge of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 for Super Nintendo for example, another sprite hack of a Sonsoft Speedy Gonzales platformer. There's Sonic Adventure for the Game Boy Color. I used to see this cartridge everywhere. It's an interesting novelty, but I wouldn't really bother with this one, it's a complete mess. How about the actual Sonic the Hedgehog running on a Super Nintendo? Who says the SNES wasn't capable of blast processing? It is an incomplete demo, but it's very impressive for what it is. It somehow reminds me of an Amiga game. Or how about this, the unholy union of Mario and Sonic, Samari the Adventurer. An unofficial 8-bit adaptation of the Mega Drive Sonic the Hedgehog for the Famicom. It's not brilliant, the game is a bit of a glitchy mess and the physics are pretty wonky, but it's impressive considering it's on the old 8-bit Famicom. It's Super Mario with attitude. Well then, that's it for me today, and if you've made it this far into the video then thanks ever so much for watching, and I hope I catch you next time. Take care.